Hey there guys, uh, so I've got a tutorial here on how to use uh, the basics of Mudbox. Um, so when you open up the first time, um, it may come up um, and ask you to choose like settings for it. You can just click it, go ahead and click on OK on that, that should be fine, everything is there by default and that will bring you through to this screen. Um, so just to learn the basics, we're just going to use one of the, um, the sculpt models that come with Mudbox. We're going to use the T-Rex to start off with and if you click on that, that will just open it up for you. Uh, so just firstly to get used to the navigation, so you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out on the mouse, um, but everything else requires you to hold down the Alt key. So if you hold down Alt and middle mouse, this will pan around your model, so you can go up and down, left and right. Uh, if you hold down the Alt key and the left mouse button, this will allow you to orbit or uh, spin around your model. And if you hold down the Alt key and left mouse, this will let you zoom in and out more smoothly. So obviously if you use the middle mouse, it jumps, but if you use the right mouse button and Alt, this will let you move in slowly, like so. Uh, so the shortcut buttons for um, the brushes, so there's, there's two factors. Uh, there's the brush size and the brush strength, uh, which you can see just over here on, on the side of the screen. So you've got the size of the brush and the strength of it, and you can adjust it by using the sliders. You can type the values in, or if you like your shortcuts, or like to kind of do a little bit more free flow, if you hold down B on the keyboard, and you click on the mouse, and sort of move it back and forth, uh, this adjusts the brush size, and if you hold down M on the keyboard, then you'll be able to adjust the strength of this, okay? So currently, uh, the default setting should be the uh, mirror is off. Um, and then if we go into here and try and apply a sculpt, as you can see, it's doing it, but it's quite jagged around the edges. That's because, as you can see, um, we've got our wireframe mode on. Uh, to toggle wireframe, you press W on the keyboard, and that switches between the two. Um, but as you can see from that, we've not got very many polygons on here, so it's trying to sculpt uh, and stretch these around, uh, which is why it's looking a little bit jagged. Uh, so to prove upon this, we need to create more subdivisions. And to do that, the shortcut for that is to press Shift and D on the keyboard. And as you can see, that's brought it up here to say that we've now got 7,248 polygons. And you can already see that by adding that, it's made our model a little bit smoother. And we've added um, a lot more polygons to it. So if I try and do it at this level, I'm just going to make my brush size a little bit smaller. You can also use the square brackets on the keyboard, like so. Um, and that will make it a little bit smoother. Um, now another great shortcut is to hold down uh, shift on the keyboard um, and that allows you to access the smoothing tool. Um, it used to be that you have to click on the smooth tool down here um, and go in and smooth it but now the shortcut is you can just hold down shift um, and you can adjust it like so. Um, I'm still not particularly happy with um, the details, so I'm gonna actually going to subdivide this again by pressing Shift D. Um, obviously, it depends on which computer you're on, but the higher the level you go, the more pressure this puts on your computer. Um, so, and obviously, the aim of the game is to try and create um, the aesthetic style that we want and make it look nice and detailed, whilst not using excessive amount of polygons, because that puts a lot of pressure on our computer and whatever we might be using this for, if we're using it for a game or something, it's going to cause it to go massively slow. So we want to try and keep it as low as possible, but also have um, as much detail in here as possible. So I'm now on level two. You can navigate up and down your levels by pressing page up and page down, or you can go into a, your mesh and you can go step up and step down just here as well. Um, you can also add your subdivisions just here as well if you wanted to. Okay. Um, so with that one there now, I'm just going to um, make sure that I add that to it and you can see that's very thin um, so I need to mess around with the, the actual size there so um, by pressing Control Z it can also make you go down the levels as well so just be careful of that so I'll make sure I'm the highest level and um, that's nice and even. I'm also going to put the mirror option on now which I turned off earlier um, but this now lets us uh, do one thing to one side of the model and it will repeat it on the other so Again, too intense, so I'm going to hold down M to bring down that brush uh, brush strength, sorry, and then I'll press B to bring down that uh, actual brush size. And again, too intense, so actually what I might need to do instead is if I bring the, the strength down a bit, but then lift the actual uh, brush size up a little bit, let's see how that does. 
and that's a bit better. So I mean, that, this is the thing with working with Mudbox. It's very different from things like 3D Studio Max because um, it's not about specific measurements or parameters. It's very much, it's kind of very similar to things like Photoshop where you, you know, you try it, you draw it in, and if it works, fantastic. If it doesn't, you uh, you go you undo it and you adjust uh, you, you know your brush size or you adjust your palette or whatever, whatever it is that you're particularly working on at that point. Um, so yeah, fairly happy with that. Um, just gonna bring that strength up a little bit and bring that out just to make this a little bit thicker. Yeah, perfect. So I've got a nice arch. I'm gonna turn W off as well just so I can see this without um, the wireframe. Just see what we've got going on. Cool. So we've established that shift allows us to smooth this out. If you feel that that actually holding down shift and smoothing out is a little bit too intense, um, you can go over to the smooth tool. Um, and at the moment, you can see the strength of that is 100%. If you move that down to say something like 50, um, it will remember those settings. That so when you go back into the sculpt and you hold down shift now, it will smooth that 50% rather than 100% it was at before. If you're finding, as I say, that the smoothing is is, is is just smoothing a little bit too much, so it's almost undoing the work that you're doing rather than allowing you to kind of smooth in with the edges. Um, and then to invert the sculpt, you hold down control. And again, I'm just going to smooth that round that bit just there, make that eye hole a little bit bigger, smooth it. Um, and I'm going to go after go up another subdivision so I can put the detail in the eyes. So press Shift D again. I'm now on level three, which is 115,968 polygons. So very, very high. Um, but we need that so that we can actually start to bring in um, the eye detail. So just going to smooth that off there. Um, and then make some ridges for the eye sections. And pull that off like there. Again, using the smooth tool. Maybe pull that strength up a little bit. Um, remember, the smooth tool is your friend. Um, just to kind of start to get the shape a little bit. Um, you could experiment with different things, but see how they look as well. Always good to do. So yeah, if you hold down Control, um, you can invert around this section as well. Um, and then just smooth it out again. Smooth the edges around a little bit if you wanted to, just to make it a little bit uh, less jagged. Cool. And uh, you know, just obviously, the great thing about this is obviously you can just have a bit of fun with it as well. And not everything has to be perfectly realistic. I mean, that's probably not a realistic size eye. Um, We've got these fall off options as well, so we've got some default settings in here in terms of how these might be, but uh, to make kind of like a, a nose area, I'm just going to uh, turn the shrink down on that, turn the brush size up, and then just invert that slightly, and then just to make a nose bit there, cool. Um, and then obviously the fall offs obviously indicate the sort of shape of the brush. So to show you here, obviously if you're going to do it like that, um, it will create things like that. But if I was to do something, choose this fall off instead, um, it would make a difference uh, where it's more round now. You see, so I've just got kind of um, nubs on the nose to just to make it look a little bit more scary, I guess. Um, okay, and then in terms of like the muscle, we can switch over to the bulge tool, uh, which is used predominantly for kind of muscle areas. Um, each brush will have its, sorry, each tool will have its own sort of brush settings, so you will need to adjust them. And it will remember which ones you've chosen between each, all of them, so they won't forget it, but just be aware that you'll have to kind of go in and set things up. The thing that seems to stay consistent, though, it always remembers that you've got Mirror X on, which is quite useful. Um, so if I try this now again, does that work in? That actually seems to be not too bad. I might just adjust the strength a little bit up a tiny bit, just to get a bit more definition. Um, so yeah, that's fine. And then smooth tool to smooth it off. Back of the legs, in the middle there, just smooth those two bits together. Um, nothing too intense. Remember to keep sort of turning it around because obviously it might look okay from one direction, um, but it might look really silly from another direction. So that's probably a bit too big. So I need to adjust my brush size down to go down there a little bit. Um, nice. Just going to smooth it off on the side. No, that didn't quite work. Smooth it first, perhaps. And then adjust that down. There we go, that looks a bit better. Cool. And then feel free to do the same on the front. 
of the arm as well. Just bring that in out like that. Nice. And then we've got some ridges as well that we can smooth in just to make this look a little bit scarier on the top perhaps. Okay. So in terms of painting, uh, we've got our paint tab just up here. So we're in our sculpt at the moment. We go to our paint one. And if we go to paint tools down here. Now, if I don't create a new paint layer by clicking on new layer just here, if I just click on the model, it will prompt me to create that new paint layer anyway, um, because it knows there's nothing in there. Um, sometimes this is by default set to TIFF. I recommend changing it to PNG just because TIFF isn't that recognized anymore, um, especially with things like game engines. So PNG is probably a, a better format to go in. And you can choose the channel. We're using the diff diffuse channel at the moment. Click OK. Um, and then depending on what color you've got chosen over here, if you click on it, it'll pull up the color wheel for you so you can choose it, which one you want. You could use like uh, uh, a green that I've got. And then you can paint on it directly, or you can scroll down and you can just hit where it says flood paint layer. Um, and then if I go ahead and create a new layer above that one, um, call it uh, maybe detail, um, click OK or hit enter to confirm, and then I'll go to the airbrush tool, lower the opacity down that to be about 50%, and we've got some stencils that we can use. Now, um, for some reason on my computer, the thumbnails or the previews aren't showing, um, but I can assure you they are there. Um, so if they're not on yours, like mine for some strange reason, you might just have to cycle through and find them. That's the one that I want. Um, and so if I click on airbrush again, and I'll just make sure I've got like a sort of a brown, a brownie orange color. Uh, a bit lighter maybe, there we go. And then I can just paint this on like so. I might need to adjust that opacity so it's a little bit higher. There we go. Um, actually, it works. That worked where I just adjust the strength instead. So I don't have to go back and change the opacity. And then we can just move across. So I'm just panning across and moving it. You can also, you can see here in the corner, you've got um, options to move the stencil as well if you, know, if you wanted to rotate this around or change the size of the stencil. Um, but yeah, I'm just painting this on now just to give it a little bit more texture. I don't really know how realistic this is This is looking. Probably not hugely. Uh, but just to kind of give you an idea about how you can start setting this out. Um, you can use the um, the stencil tools on uh, for sculpts as well. So you can be sculpting through this, um, which can lead to quite interesting effects. The, the thing is, though, with that, um, you need, obviously, your subdivisions to be quite high so it can actually pick up the detail. Um, so if that's something that you want to do because it's kind of essential to what you're creating, that's fine. But I would always recommend, if you don't have to do it that way, if you can just do it by painting the detail on instead, um, then I would try and do it that way instead again because you, um, having that sort of a high level, it's going to be a lot of polygons and it's going to be very competitionally expensive again. So just something to consider. Um, and there is also options. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to go into how we do it today. But there is options as well of um, if you were going to use the sculpt layer and paint on stencils. You, um, if if it was about just actually um, stenciling on detail rather than kind of what we've been doing here, where we've been sort of uh, making you know arms bigger or whatever like that. Um, we we if it was if it was just detail, we could use um, something called a normal map, which essentially allows you to bake. Um, the detail from things like your sculpt onto um, the actual um, normal map. And again, I'm not going to go into it um, too much, but just to simply say it's a case of you use your uh, low level um, to your highest level, um, and what Mudbox does, it kind of separates the difference, and the difference it then uh, bakes onto a normal map. So it's a, a less computationally heavy way of um, creating detail. Um, but yeah, for, th for a third time, I'm not going to go into how we do that today, um, but it is an option that you have um, when sculpting. Okay, so that is pretty much it, guys, in terms of how we sculpt and paint something in a, in just the basics in, um, in Mudbox. Just to say that if you wanted to add a little bit more detail to this, using something like Photoshop that you're a bit more used to, you can right click on the layer and you can go to where it says export channel to PSD and that will allow you to 
uh, if I just click save on that, if you save it to somewhere like your desktop or wherever, and it will open up Photoshop, um, and it will create um, the actual map for you. So there it is. Um, you've got different layers in there as well. So if I hide the um, the mud box base mesh, just so you can see how it looks underneath it. I mean, that's useful for obviously gauging difference. This looks nothing like a T-Rex, but obviously that's because um, it's been UV mapped, and it's been UV mapped because it's one of the mud box um, in-house sculpts. It's one of you know one of the models that comes with it. If you were using something like uh, uh, Free Studio Max to generate the basic shape of the model, and then wanting to put it into mud box afterwards, so you could start you know adding a little bit of detail like this, that would be fine. But it's very important that you set up your UVs before you're putting it into Mudbox, otherwise it's gonna um, it's gonna shout at you a lot. It's not gonna work in the way you want it to, especially when it comes to painting detail on. Um, so, for example, you might have like bits that are overlapping. So you might be painting in one area over here, and it starts painting in a completely different area over there because you've got overlapping UVs. So just something to be aware of um, when making your own models and putting them into Mudbox. Um, and we've obviously looked at videos beforehand of how you um, actually create UVs for models so if you need some uh, refresher on that go and check out one of the other videos um, but I think we're done here for the basics so thank you very much um, and I hope it was informative thank you